Hey everybody, it's been a couple of days. Just want to check back in with in with you. And I'll be honest with you, I've been so busy. And you say, busy? Man, everybody's on COVID hiatus. Well, I've been learning to Zoom. I've Zoomed with the coaches. Got another Zoom coming up right uh, at 9 o'clock at night with our coaches. And that's been real good, especially with, with me uh, being new to the program, getting to know the, uh, the other coach. The head coach and I have gotten to be uh, gotten along real well and been around. But I've only been over to school three times before they shut it down. And so I'm getting to know the kids, meet with my four quarterbacks, going to be meeting with the quarterbacks and the running backs on Friday. Next week, we're going to meet with the running back, I mean, the quarterbacks and the receivers. Uh, we've talked RPO game with them. Today, we talked our, uh, some of our quick game and some of our drop back game. Um, and then, so I've just been kind of busy. And you say, well, what have you been doing the rest of your time? Well, you know, Coach Chip things. Been getting up, going to run. Okay, been uh, been working in the garden. Okay, been been spending some quality time with my smoking hot wife. Okay, who is the finest real estate agent in West Georgia? Um, Called the lady. I did. Well, welcome to episode twenty-seven. Now here's what we're gonna do. Oh, by the way, shout out Brad Carroll up in Duluth, Georgia. Okay, Derek, that gum it, Derek. I forgot your last name. I know you listen to. There we go. How about that? I went to the Troy State University. A few years after, they were the red waves. Anybody want to make any smart like remarks? I was a Trojan. And we got a bunch of Trojans out there. Hey, remember to share this. Like it. Subscribe to it. Share it. Let's get it out there. Now, today we're going to get away a little bit from some talking about gap scheme and and uh, the wing T part of it. By the way, speaking of wing T, shotgun wing T, Kenny Simpson stuff is outstanding. I got the chance Sunday to look at some of his new stuff on the buck. Now, he does it a tad bit different from me, but what he does is outstanding. Uh, you get a chance to look at that. Just uh, look up Kenny Simpson. He's on one of the Facebook pages. I think Shotgun Wing T is where you'll find Kenny, and that's a good that's a good place. There's a bunch of others too. There's the uh, RPO. I think it's Shotgun RPO. The Wing T page is outstanding. The Air Raid page is outstanding. If you're on Facebook and you're not on a bunch of these pages right now with your extra time, you're missing out. Uh, just go on Facebook and start typing in keywords of things you're looking for. There's something for everything. There's single wing pages, everything. Well, this is episode 27. We're getting away from a little bit of the, the wing T kind of stuff. And what I want to talk to you about is why you should teach zone blocking, even if you're a wing T or a gap scheme team, from day one. It's going to be the first play we install on the uh, offensive line, the first scheme. Here's why. We're going to throw the ball a little bit. And I learned from a young coach, and that's what, in one of Paul's letters to Timothy, first or second Timothy, he said, look, nobody look down on you because of your age. Hey, old coaches like me. And some, and really it's the in-between guys that are a little bit more protective of it. Listen to these young guys. They got some good stuff. You know, and I can have told you all way back several episodes ago, you know, they look at the game different than we do. And I learned from a young coach, you know, about this type of zone blocking, which is not pure zone. I mean, first admit it. Uh, he even said it's more like old school dive blocking. And when he told me that, it clicked in my head. I knew exactly what he was talking about. It's, it's the way we ran zone this past year at Lynette. And it's the way we'll uh, run it. If we become a zone team over at Manchester, this is probably what we'll do. And we'll notice what we'll do. But like I told our OL coach, we're going to put this in first day because the responsibilities on the zone blocking carry over to the responsibilities for pass pro. It, it would drop back game and quick game. You know, uh, last year I could quit calling quick game protection. I just gave them uh, zone, uh, the zone blocking uh, rules uh, signal and gave them a signal which told them don't go to linebacker, don't go downfield as I like to call it, OTL, on the line. Because it, it, it accounts for everybody on the line. You can be aggressive on your quick game. And on your uh, drop back game, You ever how you teach drop back, technique wise, you know, kick slide, vertical pass set, these responsibilities are friggin' awesome. And it's and you kill two birds with one stone. On day one, you uh, in your run game uh, segment of practice, you put in this zone block, and that's all you do. Okay, and then you keep working on it. All right, and if you turn out you're not a very good zone team or you don't want to be a zone team because you're a gap scheme coach, 
you still got it in. They know the responsibilities. And it's a great first day of practice thing to teach drive blocking because it's all drive blocking. Excuse me while I get a drink. Okay. And that was some, that was tasty tea. Now, it's good for teaching drive blocking. Just get out there and get you a four-man front and call the play and you're drive blocking. It's good for teaching combo blocking. If you like comboing on your gap scheme, you know, the combo you get on this zone scheme is good stuff too. So let's, without any further ado, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, right here. All right, that was my wife that just came in. And then, come on out, come on out, come on, come on, come on, come on. And, uh, all right, this is how we block the zone. This is, a, this is zone to the left, okay? All right, and we do not block the backside wheel backer just like we don't in power scheme because we're going to read him. All right, and then in, you'll see what, why that comes into play on drop back scheme in just a little bit, okay? But you see how, how we block it. In, uh, tackles got in, tackles got in. This is the guy we read. Now, we can climb right here if we want to read the end, okay? The uh, center... And the guard got the nose, the two eye, or the one, whichever he's in. And then this guard's got the three. He's got the first man past the center. Okay, that's our basic zone blocking rules. It's a piece of cake. Now, here's how, let me show you zone uh, right before we go any further. Okay. All right, now here you see zone right. Okay, end still got the end, uh, tackle still got the end. Guard's got the tackle. Center, left guard. They're going to combo with the nose, climb to Mike. We're leaving the wheel alone because we're going to read him for RPO. And then this backside tackle, left tackle's got the end. All right, now think about responsibilities. Then we go to the pass blocking. All right, as you can see right here. Well, I left that guy right there, my bad. All right, tackle still got the end. Guard still got the tackle. These guys are still, they're going to double the nose. Mike comes here. They got him. This tackle's got this end. And you teach whatever technique you keep teach. You're going to kick slide. You're going to vertical pass set. You're going to uh, jump set. Whatever it is you're going to do, you do it. But this is your responsibilities. Okay? You say, what are we going to do about the wheel? Well, the you know the tailback's got to earn his pregame meal too. And if you got the tailback in the route, the quarterback's got to earn his pregame meal. And so what we do, we identify the mic on every play whether it's run play or pass play. So we identify the mic, and that tells the quarterback who he's responsible for. And it works out. I do it this way because now the quarterback is responsible for the same, same kid in the passing game as he was in the run game. He's still keying the wheel. He's used to hearing the center identify Mike, knowing on the, on the RPO, usually, not always. Remember, we got front side RPOs too. On backside RPO, He's got will, okay? All right, he knows that. So when we run in whatever it is, power right, zone right, he's got will right here. So if we call the passing game and we set the protection this way, or you said it this way, some people said it toward the week, whatever how you say it, it's fine with, it's fine with me or whatever you do. We'll, the, the lineman will take care of the mic, okay? If he comes... If he loops around right here, the left guard will get him. If he fires straight A gap, center's going to get him. Okay? And then if the wheel comes, quarterback's going to hit hot or the tack or the tailback's going to step up in here and get him if he's not in the route. If he's in the protection, he'll get him. So the quarterback is used to looking at the wheel anyway. He's used to identifying whoever is not the mic as his key. So we keep it that way. All right, let's look at it set the other way. All right, now here it is, same protection versus an even front again. This time the three is on the left. Okay, I left that guy there again. My bad, y'all. All right, this tackle's got the end. Guard's got the three. First man on his side of the ball. These two got the first man on this side of the ball. The nose, he's got the end again. He's locked on. And again, do whatever it is you do. Whatever it is you do. All right. The guard... The guard or the center are responsible for the mic because the center identifies mic. You say, 51's the mic, 51's the mic. Okay, mic fires here in the A gap. Center's got him. Mic loops over here to the B gap. Guard's got him. Okay. 
Will comes right here, either tailback or quarterback reads hot because he's used to keying the wheel anyway on all the run game. Not all the run game, but, you know, all the inside RPOs. Okay, backside RPOs, excuse me. All right, let's look at it versus an odd front. It's a little bit different. Now, you call it whatever you want to call it. I'm just telling you how we do it. The tackles still got the ends, and there's some adjustments to that when guys walk up, you know, backers walk up on the outside. We got calls we can make for that, and we won't go into that right now on this one, uh, on this episode, but we will, uh, if you want to, hit me up, seagull.chip.gmail.com or in the comments down below. Obviously, the center is going to get the nose. Now, what I teach the guards to do is squeeze the A-gap. Now, they're still going to kick slide with their outside foot the way we do it, but they're going to be shuffling in, squeezing the A-gaps. All right, the reason why against this defense here, if that Mike comes, he's coming one way or the other, the nose will go the other way. So the center is going to stay with the nose. So if the nose goes right, then the center and the right guard got the double. Okay? If the nose goes left, then the left guard and the center have got the double on the nose. And here comes the mic right here. All right. Also, well, now, as they squeeze, they don't have to look. They don't have to look, okay, at the mic. Their proximity, where they are, the nose or the mic will come. This guy will look back here at the Sam because we identified here's the mic, there's the wheel, that's who the quarterback's responsible for. So if they bring the end here, Sam comes here, he'll come off right here and get him. So what if the Sam comes in the B gap and the nose comes in to the A gap? Center's got him by himself. Okay? It's just like that. Now versus 3 2, same thing up front. Look, you're squeezing the A gaps. Okay? And this one's a piece of cake because I ain't with five of them in the box and you got five guys. So you're going to have a double team on the nose one way or the other. And then the quarterback's got the wheel. Tackles have always got the ends unless you get some people walking up and we got calls for that. And I'll hit you up on those if you'll hit me up. All right, remember how you can get a hold to me. All right, Siegel.chip at gmail.com. Uh, Coach Chip on Facebook, Chip Siegel on Twitter. Comments down below. Hey, if y'all not zooming, why not? Y'all be zooming with your kids, and it really helps out a guy like me that's new to a program, getting their stuff in. We don't know when we're coming back. Let's keep our fingers crossed and get it, and stay on our knees and pray that we'll be back at least in June so we can have a summer with these cats and get them in shape before we start playing at the end of August. All right, until we meet again, this has been Episode 27, Why You Should Teach Zone Scheme Even if you're not his own team. Episode 27, Football Talk with Coach Chip. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. Do what they're telling us to do, y'all. And as always, be elite.